In a recent video, which was the first in a new Worst of the Anti-Vegan series, we debunked Jordan Peterson's atrocious arguments against veganism. So to follow that one up, I'm turning my attention to someone else who has also made some rather skeptical and anti-science comments in relation to veganism, Elon Musk. Now, Elon Musk is known for many things, such as co-founding PayPal and Tesla, being the richest man in the world, building spaceships, and of course, for being the man who got ripped off when he bought Twitter. Sorry. Being the man who saved free speech. Go f yourself. But go f yourself. Is that clear? But perhaps surprisingly for all of his science-focused endeavors, Elon has some glaringly anti-science views and is engaged in some troubling anti-science behavior. Let's start with some low-hanging fruit, which according to Elon's own description of his diet, he should probably do as well. For example, Elon loves Diet Coke. It's actually his favorite drink. He once said, Diet Coke and Coke Zero are awesome. I don't care if drinking gallons of it shaves a bit of life off. Worth it. And on Joe Rogan, he stated, I'd rather eat tasty food and live a shorter life. Now, why do I raise this? After all, if he wants to be unhealthy, that's his prerogative, right? Well, the reason I raise it is because he told The Guardian, I tried being a vegetarian, but I don't think we're really designed to be vegetarians. Some of my best friends are vegetarians, even vegans, which is tricky when you're trying to go out for dinner. Firstly, when you're the world's richest man and have lived where Elon has and does, it's not tricky. But more importantly, not designed. Well, I actually agree with Elon that we're not designed to be vegetarian. After all, breastfeeding from an entirely different species certainly isn't what we are meant to do. In fact, it's creepy and weird to take part in interspecies breastfeeding. But come on, seriously, Elon, you can't actually be using this argument to try and justify why you continue eating animal products. Because I didn't realize that we have been designed to drink gallons of Diet Coke. And look, the truth is we can thrive on a plant based diets, which if Elon really is a man of science, he very much needs to start accepting. And thriving on a plant-based diet couldn't be easier thanks to Complement Essential, which is a science-backed multivitamin specifically catered to help you optimize a plant-based diet. This means that you can eat the healthiest and most sustainable diet while also protecting animals and yourself. In other words, everybody wins. Because sadly, there is still a false belief that being a vegan means you are going to miss out on key essential nutrients. However, this is simply not the case case and is totally avoidable with Complement Essential. Complement also have a range of other products, including protein powders, gut nurturing powders, and a daily greens powder, all of which can further help you meet your fitness and health goals and showcase the positives of eating plant-based. Their supplements are also third-party tested and supplements normally come in plastic packaging, but not with Complement because their packaging is compostable, meaning that once you finish with it, you can simply throw it in a compost bin. What's not to love? And also, with your first order, you even get a reusable glass jar as well. Complement are also offering 15% off their products when you click the link in my description and use the code ED15. So make sure to click the link in my description now to find out more about Complement Essential and to get your hands on their products. So thank you so much to Complement for sponsoring today's video. And now let's turn our focus back to Elon Musk, an individual who could definitely do with consuming some more plants and some more key essential nutrients. However, beyond nutrition, Elon has also sadly made statements about veganism not even being helpful for the environment. In response to a report that showed that dramatic reductions in cattle numbers were needed in Ireland to meet emissions targets, Elon said, this really needs to stop. Killing some cows doesn't matter for climate change. But Elon's not implying that we simply shouldn't kill cows. He's saying that reducing cattle numbers doesn't matter for climate change, which is just absolutely absolutely absurd. When we compare the environmental impacts of different foods, beef without fail comes out the worst every single time. And in the case of Ireland, well, agricultural emissions are the number one source of emissions in Ireland. And which emissions in particular? Methane produced from ruminant animals. In fact, ruminant animals are on their own the biggest source of greenhouse gas emissions in Ireland. In other words, removing ruminant animals in Ireland is the number one way to 
to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in Ireland. And not only that, but according to the UN's Environmental Programme's Executive Director, cutting methane is the strongest lever we have to slow climate change over the next 25 years. So not only would it be the best way to reduce Irish greenhouse gas emissions, but reducing methane specifically is also the strongest lever we have to slow climate change. In other words, what Elon is saying isn't just wrong, it's a veritable anti-truth. That all turned out to be wrong, and not just a little wrong, but so wrong that it might as well have been not just wrong, but a veritable anti-truth. Something as wrong as it could possibly get. But Elon's misinformation doesn't stop there. He also said this. Renewable energy production, so solar, wind, geothermal, improving home insulation and electric transport will do the trick. Vegan slash vegetarian helps a little, but isn't critical. We should take the set of actions that maximize total public happiness. Firstly, he's saying that human happiness is more important to prioritize than animal suffering and harm. So in other words, if people enjoy dogfighting, well, that's fine because we should maximize human happiness. Because what Elon's saying is that the industry which causes more suffering, harm, and violence to animals, the animal farming industries, they should continue on the basis that he enjoys eating animal products. So he's valuing pleasure as being more important than harm to animals. What a scary ethical framework to have towards animals, which sadly we'll be discussing in more detail later. And also how convenient it is for the founder of the world's largest electric car manufacturer to claim that electric transport is more important than plant-based diets for tackling climate change. And it's a bold claim too, since there's not an ounce of truth in it. Animal agriculture alone contributes more greenhouse gas emissions globally than the exhausts of all forms of transportation combined. So between having zero exhaust emissions or no animal farming, while well, no animal farming would reduce greenhouse gases more and that doesn't even take into account the environmental cost of creating electric cars and the materials needed. Look, don't get me wrong, electric cars are a great step in the right direction as even though they have an environmental impact, over time with use, they do become more sustainable than petrol and diesel cars. However, to claim that electric transport is a bigger part of the solution than a plant-based food system is completely and verifiably false, especially as the connection between animal agriculture and climate breakdown is not just a matter of emissions. Animal farming is the number one driver of land use, deforestation, habitat loss, and species extinction. And in the Amazon rainforest specifically, cattle ranching alone is responsible for 80% of deforestation. Plus, in many countries like the UK, animal farming is also the leading driver of river and water pollution. And no longer eating animal products would also allow us to feed every mouth on the planet with plants while also allowing us to free up an area of land equivalent in size to the whole of Australia, the whole of China, the whole of the European Union, and the whole of the United States combined. And what can we do with that land? We can rewild it, reforest it, regrow it. And why is that good? Well, because more habitats, less species extinction, cleaner rivers, lakes, streams, and oceans, and less carbon dioxide because plants grow using photosynthesis. In other words, they sequester carbon dioxide and store carbon because they use it to build up their organic biomass. In fact, the CO2 that could be sequestered each year from rewilding these no longer needed areas of land is higher than the emissions produced by all of the exhausts of all transportation combined. So a plant-based food system coupled with rewilding would reduce global emissions by over twice as much as having transportation that produces zero exhaust emissions. This is why the lead author of the most comprehensive analysis to date on the impact that farming has on the environment claimed that a vegan diet is probably the single biggest way to reduce your impacts on planet Earth. Not just greenhouse gases, but global acidification, eutrophication, land use, and water use. It is far bigger than cutting down on your flights or buying an electric car. That all turned out to be wrong, and not just a little wrong, but so wrong that it might as well have been not just wrong, but a veritable anti-truth something as wrong as it could possibly get. And I don't even like having to make these arguments because 
we should be doing all of these things. We should be switching to renewable energy production, improving home insulation, and switching to electric transportation. It's just that we should also be switching to a plant-based food system too. It's not an either-or scenario, and I am tired of people invalidating and misrepresenting the environmental benefits of a plant-based diet. And I am certainly not going to accept this misrepresentation from someone who has vested interests in electric cars. So perhaps this is actually more about maximizing Elon's profits than it is public happiness. And ironically, well, a study into Elon's plans to colonize Mars found that a plant-based diet would be the most sustainable option for Mars residents and could support double the amount of people that a diet including meat could. So if Elon really does desire interstellar living, then he's going to have to start listening to the science at some point. But then again, maybe Elon thinks that he knows better than all of the scientists who are experts in their relevant fields. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Go f yourself. Which brings me to the next part of the video. Now, if I told you that animals in the US were having holes drilled into their skulls so that a chip could be implanted into their brains by an eccentric billionaire who wants to see if we can control computers with our thoughts, well, you'd probably tell me to go easy on the science fiction novels. And yet, with Elon Musk's Neuralink, the reality of these experiments is even more troubling than you'd imagine. In fact, last year it emerged that around 1,500 animals have been killed by Elon's company Neuralink, who are trying to create brain implants to allow humans to do things like control computers with their thoughts. Neuralink have been testing on sheep, pigs, monkeys, mice, and rats, who have all been subjected to extremely invasive surgeries, where their skulls are literally drilled open so that chips can be implanted in their brains for testing. Allegations of animal cruelty initially emerged in 2017, when Neuralink conducted experiments on monkeys at the University of California, Davis, which, by the way, is a publicly funded university, meaning that taxpayers' money was, in part, used to conduct these experiments and torment the monkeys, a detail which, incidentally, both Neuralink and UC Davies worked hard to bury. They also worked hard to bury evidence of the horrific animal abuse that had taken place there. In fact, UC Davies withheld documents pertaining to the experiments until they were sued by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine under the premise that citizens have a right to know how public money is being spent. The court case resulted in 600 pages of evidence detailing an obscene level of suffering caused by the experiments, such as chronic infections, seizures, paralysis, and a glue called bioglue, which was not approved for the surgery, being used to fill holes in the monkey's skull and which eventually seeped through and damaged their brains. In one case, a monkey was left bleeding in her brain because of bioglue, and she vomited so much from the side effects that she developed open sores in her esophagus. Just truly awful. The monkeys were also kept in solitary cages despite them being highly social animals and locked into restraints, which stopped them from being able to move. In 2020, Elon did a live show demonstrating several pigs that had brain implants. The purpose of the show was to demonstrate that, in Elon's words, the pigs were happy, healthy pigs. We've been able to uh, do dual neural link implants and we've been able to show that you can actually have multiple neural links implanted, and again, healthy and happy and indistinguishable from a normal pig. But behind closed doors, it was revealed that pigs, sheep, and other animals were suffering in Neuralink facilities in the same horrific ways that monkeys at UC Davis had. In 2021, 25 pigs died after having the wrong size of chip implanted in their heads. The procedure was later repeated with 36 sheep who were also killed. On another occasion, two pigs had chips implanted in the wrong place. Failed experiments in animal suffering is the norm at Neuralink. Elon simply showcases the handful of animals who do manage to survive, at least for a while, because even animals who have survived their initial procedures are killed so that an autopsy can be performed for research purposes. Now, one might argue that Elon is developing technology which could theoretically, potentially at some point, help people who deal with paralysis or certain diseases, and so causing suffering to prevent suffering is justified. Although, it must be said that that's a comfortable argument to make when we're not the ones being tested on. 
But there are two key reasons why this argument doesn't hold up in Elon's case. Firstly, anonymous employees told the media that the reason for mistakes and botched experiments is because of Elon pushing them to work faster than they can cope. This has not only caused more animal suffering than what would even be deemed necessary by those supporting the experiments more generally, but also jeopardizes the safety of the technology for humans as well. After Neuralink were exposed for animal cruelty, they were even put under federal investigation for violations of the Animal Welfare Act, which actually really takes some doing. This is the same act that allows experimentation to occur in the first place and allows animals to be gassed to death and macerated alive in the farming industry. Basically, to be put under investigation, especially for testing, requires a level of negligence and callousness towards animals that is genuinely shocking. Neuralink responded by saying that they were absolutely committed to working with animals in the most humane and ethical way possible, which is just clearly not true. Again, the bioglue they have been using is not even approved for surgical procedures. And just remember, the word humane means having or showing compassion or benevolence. How dare they claim that they are acting with compassion to these animals. And it's funny how they use the phrase working with as if the animals are willing partners in this agreement, like they volunteer to have their skulls drilled open. Now, Elon has been mostly silent on this issue, except from stating this at a show and tell event. Before we would even think of putting a device in an animal, we, we do everything we possibly can with rigorous benchtop bench testing. So we're not cavalier in putting devices into animals. Uh, we're, we're extremely careful and uh, we, we always want the device, whenever we do the implant, uh, if it's in a she sheep or a pig or a um, monkey, to be confirmatory, um, not exploratory. Funny that, because Reuters said that it found Neuralink records with numerous references to exploratory surgeries. It's reported that Neuralink's animal care program director, Autumn Sorrells, ordered employees to remove exploration from their study titles and to stop using the term going forward. It's all just a big PR game, and Elon initially had the audacity to try to suppress what public funds were being spent on, which is ironic because it's a violation of freedom of information and suppresses free speech, and also because the world's richest man is taking handouts from the government. Imagine that. A multi-billionaire capitalist who is believed to be the world's richest man is taking money from taxpayers to perform botched experiments that have been investigated for violating animal welfare laws. And then not only does he try to suppress this information, he then also has the audacity to lie about the types of experiments being performed. Neuralink and Elon Musk say what they want to say and show what they want to show, even if that does not reflect reality. Case in point. When we think about how we can improve the lives of animals that are contributing so much for us, we think about all the ways in which we can provide them comfort, agency, and joy. One of these projects we worked on with our engineering team was making research data collection a fun, comfortable, and voluntary aspect of the animal's life. Agency is a top priority of our program. While it was always voluntary, charging the implant was an area we wanted to refine further. Now animals can more naturally walk up to a branch that has a charging coil embedded in it and charge the implant on their own volition. Choice and agency are fundamental to good welfare for anyone. So choice and agency are fundamental to the welfare of the animals in your care, is it? So they can leave. Can they? They can choose to not be experimented on. Can they? No. They are literally restrained. They have no autonomy. One of the monkeys had missing fingers and toes because it's believed they self-mutilated and chewed them off. If you experiment on animals, just be honest. You don't care about the animals. At the very least, just be honest about it. Stop gaslighting people. They even have the nerve to call themselves innovative animal advocates. If you are an innovative animal advocate like us and you love working with animals, check out our job at at Neuralink.com. And we're not even done yet. Elon's impatience with Neuralink staff has been growing since they missed regulatory deadlines and were being outperformed by rivals such as Synchron, who use a less invasive implantation method that doesn't require open brain surgery and who were approved for human trials years ago. Synchron has already been running successful human trials. Elon even sent Neuralink employees an email at six in the morning saying, we are simply not moving fast enough 
stuff. It is driving me nuts. So don't think for a second that all of this is being done because it has to be done or because Elon just cares so much. The technology is already being used more competently by another company who don't drill holes into brains and are on human trials. So why do you think Elon is pushing the staff to keep working harder and harder and faster and faster? Because he's already behind his competitors. At the beginning of this year, Elon publicly stated that the development of AI should be halted for six months because of its risk to society. Specifically, he referenced ChatGPT, stating that they should halt making any more progress. But guess what Elon has just announced? His own AI chatbot called Grok, which is a direct competitor with ChatGPT. Gosh, why did Elon want a competitor that was ahead of him in the AI space to have to halt any further progress until the end of this year? I mean, obviously it must be because Elon really cares about the risk to society because, well, that's what he said. And obviously it has nothing to do with the fact that he was working on his own chatbot, but was behind his competitors. And Elon hates it when other people take the glory or when they embarrass him. Elon called someone this publicly because the man had saved children who were trapped in a flooded cave in Thailand and had embarrassed Elon because Elon's proposal for saving the children wouldn't have worked. This is all about ego. Clearly Elon's main priority wasn't saving the trapped children because rather than celebrating when someone actually did save them, he instead called that person the worst thing that you can call someone publicly on Twitter. In fact, the biggest task that SpaceX has is developing a rocket powerful enough to get through the orbit created by the sheer size of Elon Musk's ego. These are not self-landing rockets, they just keep getting pulled back by his ego orbit. Neuralink is also about ego. And beyond that, it's a business. It's about money. Elon is indifferent that hundreds of animals are killed in the process. It only matters that they get this product on the market as soon as possible. Remember, Elon believes animals should be viewed as less of a priority than his happiness. And get this, federal law in the US requires certain animal research facilities to have a regulatory committee ensuring the care and welfare of animal test subjects. But the vast majority of Neuralink's animal testing committee are also company employees. And Neuralink staff typically receive equity in the company. Anonymous employees told Reuters that some senior level workers stand to make millions of dollars if the brain implant is successful. So there's obviously a huge conflict of interest here. The same people tasked with ensuring rigorous standards of animal care will also financially benefit from the product going through testing and receiving regulatory approval as fast as possible. And remember, Neuralink is already behind their competitors. In the same way that Elon pioneered electric cars, he could be using his vast wealth and influence to develop and pioneer game-changing animal-free testing methods. Especially since he claims that he definitely believes in the ethical treatment of animals. Well, Elon, then put your money where your mouth is. So maybe Elon should be less interested in putting a chip in someone's brain and more interested in removing the chip that he's got on his shoulder. To reference Spider-Man again, with great power comes great responsibility. But at the minute, Elon is abusing that power and being run by his ego. Sadly, regrettably, I think we're probably doomed to a lifetime of Neuralink premium and, well, racist Americans having their tweets beamed directly into our brain chips. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, let me know down below in the comments what you think about what it is that I had to say in this video. Thank you so much as well to Compliment for sponsoring today's video. And just a reminder that my new book, How to Argue with a Meat Eater and Win Every Time, is being published very, very soon. And I cannot wait for you all to get your hands on a copy. So if you've pre-ordered, then thank you so, so much. And if you haven't, then links for pre-ordering are in the description to this video. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.